Texas, New York, Philadelphia, take the Jolly Ranchers out of your ears and listen up because the Keep It Moving Tour is coming your way. Yeah, guys, uh, it's a stand-up show when we play AYG with the audience. It's a good time. Uh, September 21st, we'll be in San Antonio. September 22nd, we're going to be in Houston. Mm -hmm. And September 23rd to the 25th, we're going to be in Austin for the Moon Tower Comedy Festival. Ever heard of it? Yeah. Then uh, Dallas-Fort Worth on September 26th. Then we're bringing it back up north, baby. Uh, September 30th, we're going to be in Long Island. Mm -hmm. And then what are we doing? We're going home for cheesesteaks. Whiz wit, baby. October Cheese steaks and vengeance. October 27th, we're going to be at Helium Comedy Club in Philadelphia. Get those tickets. They're going to move fast. I'm telling you. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Welcome to another exciting edition of Are You Garbage? The show where you find out if your favorite comedians are classy individuals or absolute trash. Now, here are your hosts, Kevin Ryan and H. Foley. We're ready to rock and roll. T-Bone says ready, we're ready. Here we go. Hey, everybody out there, and welcome back to everybody's favorite new podcast. This is Are You Garbage? It's a little show. We sit down with your favorite comedians, and we find out if they grow up to be classy. Yeah. Or if they're just a big old piece of trash. Mm -hmm. I'm your host, H. Foley, coming at you on a beautiful day down here at Aunt Tootie's basement. I ran into her <laughs> last night. Yeah, what she's have to say. She jumped in front of my Uber. <laughs> my co-host is coming at you from right next to me. He is the CEO of Are You Garbage? He is an international businessman. He's my best pal in the whole world, and I love him. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> Give it up for Kevin James Ryan. Hey, gang. Happy to see you. I was with you last night. You had a couple of Bud Lights and started hugging me. A couple of Bud Lights, a <laughs> couple of fucking couple put, of teenies. He, he put his head on my head. He goes, I'm with you till the end, buddy. <laughs> like, you son fuck? of a bitch. That's private. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thanks for tuning in. As always, please make sure you rate, review, subscribe on iTunes. Full video available on YouTube. And as you know, those numbers are... True to roof. True the fucking roof. Mm -mm -mm. And then there's this website I've heard about. I forget. It's not Google. It's not Patreon.com. Check out Patreon. Mankind's greatest achievements. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon.com. Shout out to Mr. Yam and the Yam family for the developing the greatest website. Guys, go to. you can sign up on Patreon.com. And get a, a whole bunch of bonus content. Check it out. Absolutely. And have a nice quick shout out to our producer extraordinaire, yeah. T-Bone McMuffin, Toby McMullen. What up, boys? Left the yeah. batteries on the table. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking up. Okay. Asked should, you about them 10 minutes Should they ago. be in the camera? Oh, no. Sorry. I was too busy getting my license so I could be your designated driver, you fucking booze bags. Yeah. <laughs> These boys got shit hoes. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. Well, gang, that is neither here nor there. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why you're airing out our dirty laundry in the intro. <laughs> you two chatty Cathy's over here. Zip it, will you? Let's get to business. Gang, we could not be more excited to have our incredibly, and I mean incredibly special guest here with us today. Mm -hmm. She is a very funny, very successful stand-up comedian, actor, and podcaster. She was the host of 42 episodes <laughs> of Bravo's hit Ooh. Chat Room and also appeared on 44 episodes of Summer House. She is the host of the wildly successful podcast, Burning in Hell. But the big question in everybody's mind today, is she garbage? I think she bordered your reality TV star. Yeah, I was like, why are we even going through this? Like a reality <laughs> TV. <laughs> what do you want me to say? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Hannah Burner. Yeah. Oh, thank you for having me, guys. I love how your producer also produces your life. Like, oh, when you get yeah. too drunk, you're like, this needs to be produced. Get me home. Yeah. <laughs> Figure this out. Figure it out. Put me on YouTube. Which wire goes where? Get me home. <laughs> the kid's on the wagon. We go out to dinner. We have a couple of pops. He gets a little antsy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the question is, how garbage am I? Is I think the better. Uh, what's yeah. the What's the origin story? Where do you hail from? What's the deal? Because I can see your borderline. Where, <laughs> where do you guys think I hail from in the United States? Which state? I you? would say Jersey. That was offensive. <laughs> do you want? You want? Okay. I was born in Brooklyn, New York. Really? Oh, you're a New York kid. I'm a New York kid. I was born in, born in Park Slope. No shit. My grandpa was there in the 70s. He was a basketball coach, like one of those guys in the movies who's like, you're going to become a star. Yeah. And then the neighborhood got really bad and all the white people went to go to Long Island. Uh -huh. And my grandpa's like, I'm staying with the kids. Yeah. And then my dad got beat up every day. And <laughs> that, built character. that worked out for everybody. Yeah. And then Park Slope got super nice. Now it's like the rich. Yeah, it's rich. And yeah. my grandpa moved out to Long Island later in life and- I was raised in that brownstone. I say like, "Hey Arnold," that kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, 
So Holy that's my shit. origin. I, I would have thought when you, since you asked, I would have thought uh, Long Island, maybe mm-hmm. towards the Hamptons. Mm-hmm. I was thinking father, a doctor, mom, a lawyer. No, that kind of vibe. No, my dad is in sales. Um, he works from home. He like sleeps a lot. Pets our cat. Um, <laughs> Real go getter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he yeah. He, I don't know why he, he had to throw him under the bus. <laughs> yeah. What's what the fuck? Everybody's got the I'm knives like, out. My dad d- could be doing more. Um, <laughs> Wait, hold on. So your grandfather gave you guys the brownstone that 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 your dad grew up in. He basically you grew up let in the house your father grew up in. Yes. So I grew up in his bedroom, but. My dad's funny. Ooh. My dad is ve- a very funny guy, and he's kind of outsmarted the system where he's like, I don't fuck with subways. I don't fuck with people. I'm working from home. So he originated the whole, like, quarantine vibes. Yeah, he was doing it b- was away. Doing it. Yeah, he was flattening the curve years ago. When yeah. did your grandfather move out to Long Island? When? Yeah. Like, I, was that- I, love how f- I love how detailed we want this. Um, we want it. I'm going to say late 80s. He moved to Shelter Island, which is a tiny island Jesus Christ. all the way out. I know exactly where it is. You do? Yeah, it's by Green, so across the Greenport. Arbor, Greenport. You have to get on a ferry. Like They really make it hard to, for people to get out Damn. there. Damn. Yeah, he's hiding from That's something. That's old school shit. Yeah. But when, I, what I'm saying is when you grew up, you that was your house. That was our your house. Your grandfather didn't live no, with you. He, but he owned it. We were like taking care of the tenants Like when something would break. It definitely was haunted. It was a very old house, a lot of creaks. But it was it was our thing. We loved it. And my mom was a principal of a middle school in Brooklyn. All right, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Brothers and sisters? I have one younger brother. How far away? He's two years. Okay. He's more straight and narrow, corporate America, very smart. Nice. Engaged, has his shit together. And now the neighborhood's nice, and that brownstone's probably worth a couple of bucks. So we... We got to the point where the inside is falling apart. So you either have to redo Classic the New whole York in- shit, dude. <laughs> Classic New York shit. Classic New Yorker. On the yeah. inside, we're all falling apart. Of course. And probably all he talks about is how much it's worth. I get a million. Hey, yeah, I get 70 million for the seat to park out the front door. The doorman, doorman building. It's a rat, but still. My parents do that. My, my parents do that now, too, because they're like at retirement age and like, you know, the way the housing market is and like houses are going left and right in their neighborhood. They're walking around like they're casino pit bosses. Yeah. Like, like down the street, 200 grand. Down the street, 300 yep. grand. But my dad's so funny. This is an incredible purchase by a gym teacher. It was like 20 grand when he bought it. Mm-hmm. And my dad's like, why don't you buy a fucking building in Tribeca? Yeah, yeah it's like, <laughs> you know? He scraped his whole life savings <laughs> together as a fucking gym teacher. The guy's saving the neighborhood one, 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 one youth at a time. <laughs> and then his kid breaks his balls and he didn't buy an office building. <laughs> we could have had Chelsea Piers. Come on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's such a New York thing, too. So what happened is we we were like, either we put all this money in that we don't have to refurnish the whole fucking place, which was haunted, uh-huh. or... I, mean, I like how that's garbage goes. how you said that, refurnish. Yeah. <laughs> you mean re- redo. Yeah. Who the fuck knows? It's, I don't watch HGTV. Yeah. It's got good bones in it. <laughs> it does. It's good bones. Throw a couple of couches in there. We'll get... Twelve million for it. The outside had these carvings and structures, and there was like wooden carvings inside, mm-hmm. Italian, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I didn't listen, but it was nice. And so we sold it for like. You did. Yeah, he sold it for I'd say a couple million. Woo! But then a no. dude bought it, gutted it, yeah. and then resold it for like ten million. Oh yeah. yeah. But like it's it's sad that like my house is gone. Like that yeah. is the rich yeah. people yeah. like yeah, gutted yeah, yeah, it. Like yeah, we lived in it for so long, and I'll walk by it. And I'll just be like, you're not the same. You're not the same. Not the same yeah. guy. So, yeah. Do they, where does he live now? Where does your mom and dad live? So, my mom and dad just retired Shelter Island, but they lived in Long Island City for a bit. Oh, they moved out there, too? They followed your grandfather? Th- they, yeah, because they got a house there, too. Oh, this guy is fucking leeching off his own hair. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Hey, Pop, we're back. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Let me get like, a I'm key. trying to get away from you. Yeah. <laughs> Probably get 14, 15 million for this yeah. place. I love that this has become a real estate podcast. That's it great. Is. <laughs> this, is way, this is the nitty gritty. This is what we like. What was your dad's sales? What was he, what was, what was he selling? Um. Oh, he was... Okay, one... He sold... He worked with big data. I don't really That's, listen. Yeah. He, you know, this goes into my theory that most <laughs> girls don't know what their dad does for a living. I take a poll. No, but I'm going to argue they never this know. motherfucker doesn't know what he does for a living. Sure. He's very, it, it, it's like when lawyers have to do a case, he helps them like look through data and sift through it. He, it's just some like fancy. College? Did he go to college? He did. Okay. He went to a couple. He went. To, okay, my dad's trash. <laughs> but my dad has. This is not He's way. living with his dad. <laughs> this is not the way I saw this going. This my dad great. went to four different colleges. And my mom went to Cornell. 
Oh, oh my god. He we joke all the time. My dad lucked out, but my dad is good looking and funny and like has charisma. Nice. I get it. I get it totally. So I mean you guys get it. Like how do you guys get it? how the fuck do you guys get laid? Like it's you know? So anyway, you get it. Oh, we got quiet there. <laughs> I'm 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 currently married to a woman way out of my league who paid for this room, so we're gonna keep it moving. We go no comment. Next question. <laughs> I got a Cornell type thing going on too. So yeah, he did good. He did good. That's, That's good. funny. See, it's it's, it's shocking how good a sense of humor goes. <laughs> it truly is. Yeah, truly I'm is. not, and I completely understand why. <laughs> Oh, All right, so good. did you go to public school, private school? So I New York's we New York's yes. weird. Depends on where you where you land. We're gonna go into it. So I went to public school and I became a tennis player. So oh, playing, that's right. I was playing tennis. You were a good tennis player. I was player a good tennis player. Really? When I was like, what do I not look like? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> Jesus Christ, take it easy. A judgy judgy. No, I just <laughs> got the sweater on. That's so funny when the heat's turned around on you, huh, Burner? <laughs> Some would say you're burning in hell right now. <laughs> so I started playing. Talking about my sex life. <laughs> <laughs> or lack thereof. Or lack thereof. It's an outrage. <laughs> well, you, you suck at tennis, bitch. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll play you right now, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, my dad was like very sports dad. Like when I was young, he was like tossing balls at me to work on my hand eye. Yeah. I was walking at like nine months old. Like he was like, we have the next arena. <laughs> And then at like eight years old, my brother quit. He's in to scam the scam. I like it. <laughs> He's like, we're going to make quick money with this kid. <laughs> she could be pro by she's 12. <laughs> so when I was eight years old, I finally was like, I really want to do this. And a coach told my parents, she's too old to ever go pro. Jesus, at eight? And I Wait, what do you mean you're too old? Like as in like she, where she is right now. You're already, you're already she's behind. Already too she's not on track. So my parents tell me that. Wow. Yeah, and dude, apparently, tennis is crazy. Young. Apparently I sobbed all day. Mm -hmm. Like they were like, we didn't even know this kid cared about tennis. But sure. I like hated that someone told me I couldn't do something. So my crazy ass was like, now I need to prove this person wrong, and I don't care if it takes 20 years. Mm -hmm. At eight, you're thinking like At this? Eight, <laughs> Jesus Christ. So I'm not never to cross you. <laughs> have huh? a cup of decaf, will you? Relax. <laughs> you know. Watch some fucking cartoons. Eat a bowl of cereal. Go out in the park. <laughs> oh Go God. see what Doug's up to. I was listening to like Space Jam soundtrack, Rocky soundtrack. You guys like Rocky. Yeah, oh, yeah. And <laughs> we, were, we were like jogging and stretching. Like It was my dad and I, our dream together. And by... Aww. by 14, I was ranked top 15 in the nation. Jeez. Okay. And I had moved from a public school to poly prep. Nice. Which is a private school. Yeah, it is. They gave no me a little well. scholarship. But that place was not like public school. Like, I kind of stuck out like a sore thumb. Like, all the kids had money and they, yeah. they knew each other from like pre K when they got into the. Sure. And I came in in eighth grade. It's tough, yeah. Which is a random year. And I was playing number two on the girls varsity as an eighth grader and everyone's like who the fuck is this yeah. girl and i'm just like trying to make friends being a little weirdo i never really fit in and then my coach told me if you want to go pro you need to move to florida yeah why florida because they're hitting so many more balls because it's outdoors and it's like the best players they go train in florida yeah. okay it's like where they have all these um schools and stuff that are yeah where it's, it's like, like hey you wake up at five and just start hitting balls and then which, go to class which school told you this the the, the private your so private the, school coach the coach at poly prep was also my private coach that's crazy see that's how the kids do it tennis is boncos to me but it's boncos because now people are starting to learn with like naomi osaka and sports is so fucking abusive yeah but sure. like they teach you basically like don't have any emotions. Keep pushing yourself past your limit. Listen to all these coaches. Let them control you in yeah. any way. Like, I was watching this cult out fired up just hearing and that. And I was like, damn, was I? I was like, I would fall for a cult. Yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like I, where they'd be like, you're going to be the greatest. I you just have to it. trust me. And yeah, I'm well, like, I mean, at eight, <laughs> you had vengeance at eight. So it's like, <laughs> Dude, no mean, one tells me I'm what to do. I'm part Sicilian, so like, yeah. I was trying to get revenge at an early age. You had a hit list written in crayon. <laughs> <laughs> it's all spelled, spelled wrong and shit. The, the R's backwards. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. So, so I get to Florida. And basically, my only job is Wait, like you to did go it? pro. I go, my parents, they didn't know any better. I'm the oldest kid, and they're like, this Her girl. Her dad sees dollars. My dad shit. is like, we got to get her. Hold on. You're in eighth grade. I, so at this point, I was at Poly for two years. So for 10th grade, I was 15. Yeah. I got sent down to Florida. You went down to Florida. And down what, what, what are you ranked at at that point? I was ranked, I was ranked um, like top one, top 50 in the nation at no, that time. Are you just playing 
uh, school matches, or are you also playing no individual school. like tournaments? No school. Now I'm I'm playing international tournaments in Florida. So I'm working on getting an international girls 18 and under ranking. So Jesus. then if you if you get top there, you go pro. Yeah. So, but you're just instilled with all this fear. Like your parents are paying so much money for you to be here. They took a second mortgage out of their house for you to be successful. Damn. Don't be lazy. So I, w- I was just in crazy mode. Like I wake up before practice, go for a jog, practice three hours, go eat, practice another three hours, go to the gym, kind of do <laughs> online school, but not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I didn't do school for two years. I'm being honest. Um, Wait, what school were you technically enrolled in? I couldn't tell you. So this is how they <laughs> this is how they do it. It's like when an you're training, school. everybody gets set up for that. Yeah. Were you down there by yourself? Yeah. So in I was what? Like I was part room? of a house. It was like a house that the coach owned with like twelve players. And we all it was kind of like a, a little family yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. Dude, that's where in Florida was this? Crazy. This was in um Destin, Florida. It's like between um Miami Fort Lauderdale area. It's fucking hot. We're doing planks on hard courts and just like third degree burning your crazy. body. It's crazy. like, how bad do you want it? Damn. And most girls are just was this the co- This wasn't the coach from Polly. No, this is a different coach. Different coach. Sorry. So I, I've had a lot of coaches over the years. And they also, when I got there, they made a lot of changes to my game. They were kind of like, we don't like this about your game, that about your game. And I didn't do well with the changes. Yeah. They wanted to change my grip. I was having trouble. And then I got ranked top like 250 in the world for 18 and unders. What? Which is good. It's good. That's crazy. It's not great. That's one, not of the, great. It's one of those things. Tennis is one of those things where if you're like the, the gap between 250 and one is like bananas, right? Well, it's funny. It's all mental. Like if you saw professionals who were 250 versus one, you wouldn't be able to say who's better. Sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. mentally there mm-hmm. is that. But also with tennis, if you're not top 100, you're not making money. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't because aff- you're entrepreneurial. You have to pay for the travel. You have to pay for your coach. It's not like the fucking Knicks who are sitting on the bench making millions of dollars sure, losing. Yeah, like yeah, you only yeah, get yeah. paid when you win. Uh-huh. Not trying to shade the Knicks, but like we all understand. Did you get any endorsements at all? So I was endorsed by Dunlop and Reebok. What? You got all free shit? I got some free shit. What? <laughs> and you could like break a racket every now and then. It was fun. It's pretty That's sick. awesome. I always wondered sick. about like pro sports. Like, do they get new cleats every game? <laughs> new cle- I'd want new shit they every can. game. It's yeah. like Christmas, the first day of the oh, season, where they give man. you shit. But um, I eventually had a mental breakdown, as one does. Yeah. Okay. When there's a really good doc. Do you know? Do you, there's a fantastic documentary on Netflix that just came out like yesterday with Marty Fish. Yes. Yeah, I'm watching it. Yeah, it's fantastic. I'm on it. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because tennis, it's a sport. I think it's very similar to stand up in a way. Ride with me on this. Mm-hmm. Where, <laughs> where you're alone out there performing. You have the variable of the other player, just mm-hmm. like the variable of the people in the crowd. And then tennis is the only sport where you like freak out and start talking to yourself like a crazy person, which yeah. is basically what stand up is. Sure. And then you're traveling alone every weekend to different places. You're only as good as like your last performance, your last match. Of course. And something about stand up, I was like, oh, this is eerily calm for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Compared to the yeah, pressure of you, tennis. Yeah, of course, of course. But I basically have a mental breakdown in Curacao. Um, I just Curacao. Like, where's yeah. that? Who the fuck knows? I just down. Get it's, <laughs> it's in like the West Indies. Yes. Holy shit! You go, it's like I'd a go new to hot random spot. Places. Everybody's going. So you're to fucking now. doing it. You're cooking. You're I'm going cooking. around. And I'm doing well, but I'm like putting. It's not one of those fancy sports schools where they go. Who cares? Like you don't have to go to class. Just become the best athlete you can. Exactly. But you have so much pressure to win on you. It's crazy, and I was, like, trying to change my forehand grip, and then whenever the match would start, I'd get really tight, and I would slice it. This is, like, very tennis no. niche. Yeah. And um, I was getting disappointed in myself. I was giving, I was having a lot of performance anxiety. Yes. And um, for anyone who's experienced performance anxiety, it's fucked up. Because, like, in practice, you're great. Sure. And everyone's like, okay, just do it in a match. And then the match like comes. fucking trying. And yeah, you're, yeah, like, yeah. you get paralyzed, and then mm-hmm. people are like, you're a crazy bitch. And as I've learned later in life, I've learned that, like, there's been a lot of reasons why I have performance anxiety. It wasn't just I woke up one day. I mean, parts of it are just genetic, not sure. to get too dark, but parts of it is also like, I've had coaches like throw water at me. I've had coaches make me run until I cramped up. Mm-hmm. I've had a lot, but at the time, this is what the cult shit is. Sure. Like, you're like, this is what you have to do. Oh yeah, you're fully invested. And like, they're I'm like, in. see Samantha across the court? She served all night. What did you do? So you're just in this psychotic oh. break. <laughs> That's a lie. I'd end up fighting a coach for sure. <laughs> I did. I would. I would get into fights on the court because he'd yell something at me, and I'd be like, "Fuck you!" And we'd get into fights during the match. Jesus. So when did you officially quit? So at 16, I'm ranked high in internationally, but um, I started just crying at night. 
<laughs> and I get sometimes it. your body will tell you what your mind isn't telling yes. you. I was like losing weight because I was like working hard so much. And finally, I just like had a breakdown. I was like, I want to go home. And this was like a movie moment where I get back and it's me and my dad again. The beginning of the journey You're where it all started. You're back at the Park Slope house. Back in Park Slope. You're how old? Throat. 17, 18? I was, I was 16. So what's your, what's your, do you go back to high school? I'm about to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> He's on the edge of his seat. He's like, what happened? I really am, man. You got me hooked with this. <laughs> so my dad takes me to the tennis court. He's so dramatic, but he's like, I'm going to hit this ball to you, and you're going to hit it back, and you're going to tell me if you want to quit or if you want to keep playing. And regardless of what you do, I'm still going to love you. Mm-hmm. So you know what Crazy Bitch was like, we got to keep going. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Because I put too much into it. So this is when it gets kind of fun. My mom is a principal, she, so she knows other principals, and I'm in the middle, middle of a year. I started hostessing at a Korean restaurant in Brooklyn to finish my online schooling to then start a new school. The school that was really good as a great tennis team, they only had a boys team. But because of Title IX, if a girl's good enough, you, you have play. to let her on the team. Like if I win my way up to the team. So it's called the Beacon School on the Upper West Side. I show up, I win a bunch of matches, and we end up winning. Beating dudes, knocking them off? <laughs> yeah. I love we that. We end up beating. What Disney? Are you fucking watching this? <laughs> Get me 300 words on this. Let's go. What are we doing? So I come from like. What oh. are we doing? <laughs> Holy I shit. I come from being like the bottom of the bottom to then like finding this new community of these like cool guys. They would joke. We got on the court and they'd be like, take it easy on her. Because they knew to me. I was like, if I lose this motherfucker who smokes weed all day and played high school sure. a couple of times, I'll. I'll end it. Yeah. Was there any decent male players on their team, like there, near your level? There was always like, like one or two to top guys on okay. each team. Um, and with the guy, the guys on your team were cool to you. You didn't have to like. They you know, were beyond cool because I also was training with them. Like the New York City community is pretty small. Where like I would train with them. They yeah. knew what I was. And um, see, I like that angle even better because normally in a movie they would be like bully you until you earn their respect. But the no, fact these that they guys, were cool off the cause, bat because we it's trained a whole together, angle on so they knew I was crazy. They respected me, and we had a, a good bond. And and we weren't the like horse man or probably prep kids. Like we were the public school. Like these kids who came from Queens who just yeah, are like yeah, naturally yeah. talented. And I love that like this underdog is mentality. <laughs> so, but get then, William Defoe on the phone. So, <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna be the coach. I'm already casting. I'm sorry. <laughs> But then you know there's going to be drama when someone's doing well. Manscaped, Manscaped, Manscaped. Uh-huh. I'll say it one more time. Shout out to the good people at Manscaped with that skin safe technology. Yeah. You know, Kippy, it's cuddling season's coming up. Mm-hmm. Fireplace is going, getting snuggly, bumping uglies. There's a chill in the air. You don't want to be down there with leaves all over your yard, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I got to run wanna, a tight ship down there. <laughs> you want to get the Manscaped 4.0 and clean it up for the fall. Yeah. I used it this morning. I'm not even lying. Used it this morning. Got two nice fresh quail eggs down there. (laughs) If you want to take a gander, hit me up. The peaches are in season. Oh, dude, I love. I do it in a. It's waterproof. It's got the light on it. It's the. It's the. You know, you're not gonna cut yourself. And I've said it. I've gone on record a bunch. I was a standard blade and cream man this up guy. until up until the lawnmower four point shaving like Al Capone over here. <laughs> I got my legs up on the stirrups. Got the manscape. Uh, the performance package includes the weed whacker to crop your worst weeds. Uh, of the, the near the near the ear and nose trimmer. That the best. Thing. I love that thing. Zzz, that guy, fuck yeah, that thing cooks, Daddy O. Cooking. Yeah, it's great. Um, you can seal the deal with Manscaped. They have the four. Um, they have the skin safe technology, uh, the crop preserver, the ball deodorant keeps it nice, fresh. Everything you know, you can't be opening it up and it smell like the swamp down there. You know, no. So you check out all your Manscaped stuff. Uh, you'll get twenty percent off and free shipping with promo code garbage Woo! at manscaped.com. That's twenty percent off plus free shipping with the promo code garbage. Manscaped.com. Make your balls a priority this fall. Choose Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. Yes, they will. Do it. Gang, this podcast is brought to you by the good people at Stamps.com. Ooh, the now, best in the biz. That's right, Kippy, the best in the biz, and they don't want you wasting time in the post office nope. when you could be all making money with your small business. That's why you got to get on Stamps.com. Kippy, straighten them out. Yeah, guys, as we're small business owners, we use Stamps.com. That's what we send all the merch out with. The track, it's, it's so easy. Foley can do it. Foley's mm-hmm. in here printing stuff out. 
I don't know how he does it, but he, I mean, you're the master shipper over there. It's that easy, kids. It, guys, all you need is an internet Foley connection. Foley proof. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's perfect. <laughs> it's the best ad cosign I can ever give Foley it. Foley proof and fully approved. It's fully proof. He did eat the laptop, but still. <laughs> um, guys, all you need is the uh, the printer, um, internet, and a computer, and you can send, if you're in your car, you can be in a hotel room, you can be in an office, your house, wherever it is. It's easy peasy. Hotel uh, business center. Within Yes. Within minutes, you're up and running, printing official postage for any letter, any package, any size, anywhere, big man. What about them deals they got with USPS and UPS? Hmm, let me think. Yeah, you save money on both of those, you <laughs> dummy. I told you, Toby, you idiot. <laughs> I don't know why. Of course they. You say, dude, you can save so much money on postage just by doing it this way. And you pl- you can set it up. I know you're busy. You run a small business. You, there, there you're not be- hanging out in the post office like up. There should be two or three of you. you. Wear a lot of hats. This way, you can, whatever you're shipping out, you can set up, and they'll come pick it up right for you. You don't even need to go to the post office no more. Oh, that's right. You save time and money with Stamps.com. There's no risk. And with our promo code GARBAGE, you'll get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital scale. They sent it to us. A little package comes. Got the promo code. Bada I was bing, there. It's fantastic. It's easy peasy. No long-term commitments or contracts. So just go to stamps.com. Click the microphone at the top of the homepage. Type in the words garbage. You know it. You love it. That's stamps.com. Promo code garbage. Stamps.com. Never go to the post office again. Now back. to the show. Ta-da show. So I think there were some girls who played, but they were like, Short hair, more like butchy like, and I yeah. had like long hair, and I was like girly, girly so yeah. it caused more of a stir in the media. So we win in the <laughs> media. <laughs> what are you talking, really? So like New York Times wrote an article that was like she plays with the boys and rivals don't like it because other schools started to get fucking pissed because we won the whole New York City Athletic League championship or whatever the fuck it's Jesus. called. Jesus, and they were like, it's not fair that you have you're a ringer on your team that's a girl like we want our girls who are ringers on our team and i'm like wait what are we fighting for right now why was there was there any other per- any other people that were as accomplished as you so there on was other schools there were playing? some uh, some like one or two or three girls that were really good on other teams but they basically were like this isn't fair they didn't like that i was a ringer on their team because they they were saying girls should not be able to play with the guys because it's a lose-lose because if they beat me, it's like they were supposed to. And if they lose to me, the they lost to a girl. Yeah. But in my head, I'm like, it's a lose-lose. Me playing a freshman who doesn't play tennis seriously. Like, if I lose to him, that's horrible to sure, me. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a weird... I mean, gender aside, wouldn't you have to be recognized just based on skill. your international accomplishments? Well, that's the thing. With tennis, it's not physical. So, yeah. like, yeah, it, at some point, like, they could serve harder than me. But tennis, the joke, it's not a joke. It's like a quote that the court is six inches from ear to ear. So I go in these courts and I would just like play with their heads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One guy broke three rackets at the end of our match. <laughs> but I was used to this when I was younger. You guys are like a little scared. When I, I loved it. I'm fucking At 11 fucked. years old, I, got, I went to a tennis camp and I had a crush on this one guy. He was like mm-hmm. the other good player. And the whole time I was like too nervous to talk I'll to him. I'll be cast as that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he was really good. <laughs> Send me the side, will you? I know how I'll get his love. I'll humiliate him publicly. <laughs> <laughs> so we end up pl- th- at the end of the week where I was like too nervous to talk to him. We had a tournament. Yeah. And it is it is a movie. I fucking meet so up in with the, him. In the movie, I'm putting him on a rival team in the city. Yes. It's okay. not somebody you meet, you, you meet at a camp. Or maybe I, f- I see him again years later at this tournament. I don't know if we're jumping ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I appreciate, might, this, but I, this I, I appreciate your notes. This but, is, uh, <laughs> that might be in the sequel. I mean, I need to have some creative control of my project. <laughs> no, you sign the story over to us. It's an Antony, it's an Antony project right now. We got three thousand dollars raised already. But, hear but me, hear like, me out on this. On instead Patreon? of a host, instead of a hostess job, you get a waitressing job, and we call it service. I'm oh! obsessed. I'm obsessed. That's really great. That's good. That's what that's they really yell great. Out. Service. I um. So I play this kid. Oh, I you. was like 13, 14. I play him at the end, and I win. And I have such a crush on him. And at the end of the match, he breaks two of his rackets and won't even make eye contact with me. And never. And that was like my relationship. But my dad was always like, "Never let a boy distract you." So I'd be like fighting these weird feelings. But then fast forward, my dad said he heard him at a tournament go, and he saw me and he goes, that's the only girl that ever beat me. So like he remembers me. Yeah, there you go. It's better <laughs> to be living remembered. Free right? head. Man, you got real psycho there for that. <laughs> he remembers me. I'll never Jesus. forget the one. I my, beat him. My neighbor, uh, she was a girl growing up and she would wrestle. And yeah. She would, we would go to, tour, like, because I was friends with her, she would fuck these kids up, and then they would, they would go cry, like, under the scores table, and I'm like, this, it was, 
She would like fuck dudes up. I wrestled a girl. I wrestled a girl in eighth grade. Did you win? Yeah, I won. This was two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Get the last donut my ass. <laughs> Tell you that. Wrestling's next level though. Like that's some intimate shit. With me, like yeah, I would sure. Oh yeah. I was <laughs> across the net. But the the final thing was at the end, there was a singles tournament for New York City. And they go, Hannah can't play on the boys. She has to play with the girls. And I had all this pressure to show like I deserve to play with the boys. Yeah. And I had to play this girl. She ended up playing for Arizona or something, and I lost the first like five games. And I was down five two, and I'm like, I just felt so much fucking pressure. Like sure. there was, there was all this press, like Daily News and all this stuff. I ended up press. Winning. There was press, and it's crazy. I feel like people talk about this in entertainment too. Sometimes when it's you're getting all this attention, it's actually the scariest. Mm -hmm. And I was like forgetting how to hit my backhand, and I was just so scared. But I, I won the match, and then I got a full ride to the University of Wisconsin. Pretty good full ride. And you went there good. and played tennis in college. Go Badgers! Yes. Wow. But it is trash because I didn't have to pay shit. And my dad was very happy. Yeah. You go into what Wisconsin. Do you mean? <laughs> he finally got a couple of them dollars back. Those Florida trips. We literally joke all the time. I'm like, can I have a 20? And he's like, you owe me $450,000. I'm like, that's not how parenting works, yeah. dad. Anyway. Yeah, that's going great. in the book, though. I'll tell you that. <laughs> that is a fucking that's Bonkos a wild, banana story. Wild but tale. I did end up playing some professional tournaments. When I was in Florida. Yeah. So I kind of like checked that off the box. And then at 22, I decided to go back to New York City and retire. Hmm. Retire. 22, retired. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Pretty. But I retired cool. to become an intern at a fashion like magazine. <laughs> what? Which one? I, no, it was like. We a, got the sequel. It was like a fashion boutique called Bird in Brooklyn. And okay. And they were really mean. Yeah. And I went from being like captain of my team to being like. If you don't get me coffee right now, uh, I will throw it in your face. And I was just like, this is weird. Um, but I yeah. Think that's a movie too, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we haven't even hit the reality TV bullshit yet. Yeah, it's not. And then you want to sit on a gold one here. <laughs> get an NDA from her. Work, the sequel. You're working in the, in the fashion business, and now it's off the racket. <laughs> It's pretty good. Off it the gets taken over by terrorists, and you have some kind of magic tennis racket with grenade balls. And now you keep you're fucking. Them now, I mean, that's what are some we Wonder doing? Woman guys, shit. Guys, guys, guys. No bad ideas in a brainstorm. Trying to sell some action. It's the writer's room here, guys. Come on. Let's get it cracking. All right. Let's get into some are you garbage questions. That's an insane backstory. Be yeah, from that. <laughs> Also, we're missing eight years in between then and now, too. Yeah, and then she went on to host, to be on two reality TV shows or something. Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. Boncos. Well, we got to find out. Because I didn't hear, I couldn't get any, I was just, that was just a fucking enthralling, fucking amazing story. There was no garbage in that. Now we got to really find Her out. Her parents gave her away at 14. What are you talking about? <laughs> True. True. I think she just distracted us with, with, with the Sports Illustrated she, story. Yeah, this is what she All right, doing. now we're going to start grilling. Yeah, that's called 30 for 30 right there. <laughs> oh, that's a good 30 for yeah, 30. Yeah. Liev Schreiber, call us. <laughs> Liev. Does the good announcers. All right. Um, so you sold the house in <laughs> Park Slope. I'm recapping. Uh, yeah, no, I know. I know. I know, big man. What street was that on over there? Garfield Place between 7th and 8th. Mm, that's pretty A classy. block away from Prospect Park. And that's your grocery classy. store over there growing up? Key food. Key food goes either way. We found out. I think they're individually owned, so it, it, they're real hit or miss. Depending um, and how was it? Was it all right? It or was, was it good, like non-tiled concrete like, floor? <laughs> a Starbucks did try to open, and the whole community was in arms because they were like, <laughs> we do small businesses, but now it's like all now big business. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know where that has to do with garbage, but... That's that is it's like, like the, hipster garbage. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We had a Connecticut muffin. What the fuck's a Connecticut muffin? Exactly. Jesus, oh, that's that weird. Yeah. We're we're small boutique type. What kind of cool car vibes. did your dad drive or your mom? Ford. You guys Ford, Ford Taurus. Ooh. Ford Taurus. Yeah. What color? Red. Like drug dealer car. <laughs> that's put that in the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> fucking bonkos. And do you have a car now? Um, I just got my first car, but I don't drive. What is it? What do you mean? I got an Audi. I don't have a license. I lost my license. It expired. And then I failed my test. What? The, how did we <laughs> able to buy a car? Because my fiance. <laughs> I bought it so my fiance can drive me around. Okay. But are you allowed to buy a car if you don't have a license? I've, is this a citizen's arrest? What's happening <laughs> here? <laughs> Toby Cuffer. <laughs> 
Hooker, hey, Toby. Hey, so, hey, fat boy, zip it, will you? <laughs> yeah. So growing up in New York City, we didn't have driver's ed or anything, so sure. I never got my license. At 24, my dad was like, you have to get your license. I got it in the Bronx. It was sketchy. I ended railing the curb, and the lady was like, Jesus Christ, and she passed me. Then I never really drove, and then during the pandemic, it expired. Didn't know. I just had to press something online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I had to redo my test, and I failed it. Do they tell you that there? Like, they're sitting there with the clipboard, They have this and they receipt go. for you, and then they write fail or pass, and they just hand it to you. I didn't even get to the parallel parking. The guy was like, let's turn the car around. <laughs> um, I've seen all I need to see. So, yeah. They're going and the wrong goes, way, and goes, we got stuck on the median. <laughs> they have all their, like, your history. So he goes, you had your license before? And I was like, yep. Yeah, I tried to make him laugh, and he didn't respond. They, those guys are tough. Yeah, those guys are tough. How yeah, bad? I, I mean. I, like, apparently the first turn, the left turn, I just, like, kind of went right on the yellow lines. Apparently you're not supposed to do that. So it's good you're not driving. It's yeah. good your, your your fiance has a license. Yeah. You got an Audi. Yeah. Pretty nice. Thank you. Pretty classy. Thank you. SUV? Reality TV money, yes. Nice. Yeah, but this is, like, this falls into, like, trashy new. She bought an Audi. It's <laughs> not licensed. I'm aware. Actually, it's not bought. It's leased. When that when so important my, information. So your the 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 first successful thing you started doing in, in uh, entertainment was uh, working on the Bravo shows, right? So I ended up going into sales as my first real job when I was making money. Big data, cold calling, cold <laughs> calling, data. coffees for closes, and um. What I was, were you pushing? I was pushing digital marketing for small businesses. Couldn't tell you what it does. Sure, of course. But I was These like, I made people shifting. laugh. Yeah. I was like, good energy. And I just Boiler started selling shit. a shit ton. Like, I was making six figures, 22 years old. What? But I fucking hated it. And I would, I just hated it. I felt like I was back in tennis where like, if you had a win, you're happy. If you didn't, you hated yourself. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm doing the same shit. And I was more interested in the creative stuff. So then I went to a marketing company that was really boring and I quit. Finally, I'm like, I want to do video. That was the thought. I just want to do video. Okay. <laughs> and I believe in manifestation. Do you boys le- believe in manifestation? To an extent, yeah. I mean, I believe, and I'm not trying to be all like crystal bullshit. It's more like if you put it out there, like you, it's like after a, a breakup and you think about your ex, you notice them everywhere. Sure. It's like if you think of something positive, you start noticing the opportunities I everywhere. Completely agree. So I was like. In University of Wisconsin, I did some sports broadcasting because I know sports. I like being in front of the camera. I was like, I want to do that again. This company called, this media company for millennial women wanted some funny videos. Okay. So, so I sent some funny videos and they wanted five years experience of a video producer. And I knew how to edit, but I didn't know shit. So it just came with a bunch of ideas. So this company paid me $300 a week and they were like, can you make funny videos and memes mm-hmm. and tweets? And I was like, I'm the funny friend in my group text. Like. I come from a funny family. I can yeah, do this. Yeah, can figure it out. And then I, st- I, I started, my tweets started to go viral. And I started to create videos. I started to meet comedians in the city. And that was my- Your bridge my to bridge. stand up. Yeah. And then I started a podcast. And then I found out that I got casted on a reality TV show. So I was like, okay, this could be my platform to do what I really love to do, which is make people laugh. Damn. But you already had a good chunk of cash from the sales thing. I had decent cash, and also I hadn't spent any money on college because I took all my parents' money. And were you living that. at home at the time when you were doing I, the sales thing? Yeah, I was living at home. So what did you, was there anything that you bought irresponsibly when you first got a bunch of money? How do I say this? I am the cheapest motherfucker really? in the world. Really? I don't spend any money on wow. anything except food. Um, Yeah, I don't spend, and I don't spend money on That's anything. That's very classy. <laughs> Is that? What How'd do you, you mean? Get, a 22-year-old Cause, kid cause making my- six figures? Do you have any fiance, idea what I would have bought? We went shopping, and he was like, let's get these strawberries. And I'm like, those strawberries are $9. And he's like, you need to grow up. Oh, yeah, you're not. So that's not, I don't think that's classy. Like, I'm a little crazy with I that. How did you know. get here I today? Like that. Any saver. I Ubered. You Ubered, okay. I Ubered. Okay. Um, Ubering and food, I will sacrifice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Mm. <laughs> I, I love how I feel like I'm in a test right now for real, because he's Xing stuff sure, off. yeah. He's shaking his head a little. <laughs> Those notes mean nothing. It just says jelly beans <laughs> over and over and over. He's playing tic tac toe with himself. <laughs> <laughs> and he somehow and always he lo- loses. He loses. <laughs> God damn it! This guy's killing me. <laughs> oh my god. Kippy, what was my first big purchase? I guess I finally got a studio apartment 
after one year into reality TV, I started renting a studio apartment, but it was in Queens, so that's kind of trashy. Yeah, no. that's. <laughs> What really? <laughs> wow! Oh, imagine it was, that. It was Long Island a City. studio in Queens. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everything's coming up. I mean, it wasn't a burner. Astoria, but it was it was Long Island City. But still, that's <laughs> no, that's yeah. I love how she's like. Well, I, I I thought she said she bought. I was like, all right, well, you, you yeah, know, that's where I thought you were going. Guy. You started renting a studio apartment in Queens. <laughs> credit score is good. Yeah, credit score is good. Credit cards. I got credit cards. Roughly, what's the credit limit? Credit limit. All, oh, all combined, all said and done. I don't know because I don't really spend money, but I've never been in trouble with it. Okay, see, that's a classy person's answer. <laughs> American Express. Um, no, Chase Sapphire. Ooh. That Sapphire, pretty good. Not too pretty shabby. good. Is it a metal card or is it plastic? It's in between. Uh-huh. I don't know exactly like, what you're talking. You know what I'm talking about? about? It's not. Oh yeah, I've seen one. <laughs> I've seen one. <laughs> I used to shine. A- I used to shine the shoes of a man who had one. I said, <laughs> I "What's that, Mister?" So that's a credit card, son. <laughs> no, but so I'm. I just turned thirty. I didn't start making money until like real money until I was twenty eight. Um, you said you were making six figures at twenty two. That's real money. Yeah, but you know, you get a lot. Wow, of that expenses. means you're making real, real money. <laughs> <laughs> this kid's got some cash. On no, but, oh, I, but how much cash you got on you right now? But I'm st- <laughs> you got some twenties from stand up. Yeah. But the f- the fun part about all this is, is, I got on a reality TV show. And then they got me on a talk show on Bravo. And I was like, oh, my God, I've made it. Yeah. And then um, it all fell apart and I lost both jobs. <laughs> sure. Yeah, there's and not a lot of legs to those reality no. TV shows. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, but you still got a shitload of episodes out of them. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's I, I didn't. I had two great seasons and one, like, just terrible season. Um, But I got out alive. There you go. Yeah. I love it. I had a girl who was on The Bachelor. She she threw a huge party for like the viewing party. And yeah. I went it, to high school with it her. Went bad. And she got voted off in the first fucking episode. And then the party ended with her crying in the back of the bar. Oh my and god. And we're all like, why did you invite they the whole sh- high that school is so fucked out up. to this? You knew how this you ended. Knew yeah, how like this you were there. <laughs> you were there. She was the first one off. It was like she didn't even make it through the credits. It's I think like the she fact- forgot. <laughs> Yeah, the fact that she was even there would tell. Don't they film Maybe that? Maybe she in, in... thought there'd be more screen time because you don't know what they're going to show. Because they filmed for like 12 hours that first night. I don't even think she unpacked. Like she was still, <laughs> she got, That's she on got her. tossed quick. That's on her. Because I could see like throwing a party and then they start a new storyline that you're not aware of where everyone's talking shit about you. Like that happened to me where I would be like, this is embarrassing. But that bitch knew. She, she knew. Yeah, she knew. She, she got... wanted some negative attention maybe. She All attention's yeah. decent attention. That's true. She got to play the victim afterwards. Yes. Which I'm a big fan of. <laughs> Quite honest with you. Hey, listen, she can play whatever role she wants. It was open bar. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's a sin. Tough break. Uh, you have four margaritas. Yeah. And, uh, Two more rum and cokes, please. <laughs> All right. What do you got, Kip? Um, <laughs> let's see. How old were you the first time you had lobster? I was young because we'd go to Montauk when I was younger. Uh, we lived. We'd be in Brooklyn, and we'd go out to Shelter Island. I'd go to, to the, your grandfather's to see to my grandfather's. That would be the vacation spot. clam bar. Yeah, I go to the clam bar in Montauk. Pretty good. Pretty Not young. Bad. I do remember my dad still reminds me once I got fried flounder. He got a lobster and I was like, <laughs> I want that. And he gave me his lobster. And to this day, he's like, I gave you my fucking lobster. Yeah, this guy Jesus. really holds a grudge. <laughs> know, right? The 400 grand the lobster. <laughs> Wait. Remember when you had the last bowl of cereal? Huh? <laughs> You don't think I like Frosted Flakes? Now you know where I get my cheap ass from. That's good. That's good. I think that I'm, I'm sticking to my assessment. I think that's a sign of, of class. Saving money. Wow. Okay. Mm, you saving money and cheapness are two things. Um, do you call it <laughs> mini golf or putt putt? Mini golf. Okay. Is that classy? Putt putt's trashy. Mini golf. Yeah, putt putt yeah. in the South, they say that. When someone's first said putt putt, I was like, excuse me? It's. It sounds like you're talking to Bless a baby. Bless you. Yeah, it's, it's insane. <laughs> uh, as an athletic person, are there any <laughs> games like putt putt that you excel at, like skee ball or. Great question. I'm quite good at ping pong. Like I won't. I mean, you know, yeah. I won't. On. I it's won't beat tennis. a real. I won't beat a real ping pong player because they have like real technique. But like, if we're drunk at a bar, I am throwing down yeah. and just whooping ass. She's got people running. I'll down. be there all night, <laughs> and I'm very competitive. Like I'll go out and I'll be like, okay, first to five, get in a line, and I'll be like, next, next victim, next victim, and then I'll go home all sweaty. Yeah, sounds like a real cool hang. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, fun time with, having a good time with Maritolovo over here. Huh? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Trying to get some cheesesteak egg rolls in here. <laughs> no, what the fuck? 
<laughs> get a pitcher no, of beer. But relax. you guys, the guys, it's a, it's a get, get Pete Sampras the guys the get very hyped up about. It. They're like, I could beat her. I'm gonna beat her. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna beat her. So then it becomes. Yeah. Then you gotta. You then gotta you fucking, have to show you up. You gotta own them. Um. I actually am. This is kind of classy of me. I'm good at golf. I'm good That's at golf. Are classy. you? I'm. I'm a 15 handicap. What? Yeah. No, because when I was younger in Shelter Island, we played tennis and golf, and I kind of had to choose between. So um. I'm basically a retired old man, and I get along very well with older men who are in finance. I know I could talk the talk. I watch a golf channel on Sundays. How often do you get out? Um, recently, because I've been traveling the, less. I gotta say, the, the Brooklyn, the Brooklyn thing is real misleading. <laughs> I think you're pretty classy. <laughs> Wait, you're making me blush. <laughs> I mean, what? I don't know. I, where, are we? Are we doing in two different shows? Here? Am I crazy? <laughs> She's got an Audi and can't drive it. <laughs> yeah, but still, the Shelter Island thing. But good is it kind of cla- her grandfather? The Shelter Island thing's her grandfather. That's even. I think that's even makes it more classy because there's a little bit of heritage. They're, they're not some renters out there on the weekends. There's some legacy. There's some as they legacy. Call it. I know, I, first of all, I don't know what Shelter Island is, but it sounds haunted. <laughs> let's, let's, I mean, if we're going to be throwing this around, let's, I, I, I got I to explain how I feel about it. You'll never find me there. I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Let's see. Your um, family ever changed their name? Anybody in your family ever changed their name? Great question. So my mom's last name is DeLeo, Italian. My dad is like Russian, Austrian, Polish, Jewish. He's Burner. Uh-huh. They may have been changed in Ellis Island to shorten yeah, them up. They may have known, yeah. nothing known. Though. But nobody, nobody's first. You don't have a cousin that like changed her name. She was named Sheila, and she changed her name <laughs> to Trixie. Yeah, <laughs> Trixie. <laughs> Trixie's great. <laughs> um, no, no name ch- changes. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Not a lot of drama in the family. Not bad. So, there's nobody in your immediate family, your cousins, that doesn't speak to each other or anything like that. There actually is not. It's super boring. Hmm. Telling you, these kids are right. Any, <laughs> any male family members, cousins, uncles have ponytails? No. Any runaways in the family? No, but one of my cousins has been studying abroad for a while. <laughs> <laughs> An eerily <laughs> long time. <laughs> She's at the Sorbonne. He's been volunteering in Africa for a while. Wow. Come on, That's this kid. <laughs> Does anybody in your family not trust the banks? <laughs> <laughs> My dad is queasy about the stock market, but my brother's been getting him to be more trustworthy. Okay, okay. Any instruments as a kid? Um, piano, very, a little bit. A little bit of trumpet. I thought it was going to be the easiest one because there's only three buttons. Yeah. It's actually the hardest. Plus the plunger at the end. Yes, yes. So, Any magicians in the family? Um, God, no. Yeah, this you, is, come on. Do you put potato <laughs> chips on a sandwich? Yes. Ooh. Have Especially you ever- tuna. Ooh. I fuck with that. Oh, that just made my blood run cold. Oh, oh. <laughs> oil, um, you oil do- and vinegar, a little salt and vinegar chip on a ooh on a tuna sandwich. Yes. Oh, I'm yeah. doing that this weekend for yes. sure. Thought <laughs> <laughs> well, you were eating well. The tuna fish. I'll put it on wheat toast. Tuna fish is protein. I'll use vegan A's. Yeah. What's your mayonnaise? Um, any and all. You do Miracle Whip? Mm, not not normally. I do. Was it Heinz? Hellman's. No. Hellman's. Hellman's. Sorry, Hellman's. Yeah. This kid's all right. <laughs> she didn't even know what Hellman's was. <laughs> I just remember the age. I don't, I don't do the shopping in the family. You Growing know? up, would you keep the butter on the counter or in the refrigerator? In the refrigerator. Huh. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Favorite salad dressing? Um, I don't eat salads. Why not? Because it's rabbit food. What do you eat? Come on. I like <laughs> you, don't eat, you don't eat vegetables? I do, but um, salads, it's just like very chewy. Um, if I were to put something on it. <laughs> that's, that's one way to put it. Maybe a... Maybe a ranch. I know that's trashy, but um, it's better than the other ones. It's better than barbecue sauce. You're starting to work your way down. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you that. I mean, yeah, it's rabbit. Food. <laughs> that's like something a dad said in the eighties. I mean, I I do eat sweet green when I have to. Okay, that's, that's a fantastic, uh, fantastic harvest company. bowl. Yeah. Do you drink? I recommend. Um, not I really. I though. did when I was on reality TV because I got paid for it. Okay. But um, I've always been better at eating than drinking. Put mm. uh, ice in, in your wine. No. Okay, not bad. Hmm. <laughs> Ever bought anything at an auction? <laughs> Only um, for like a charity thing once. <laughs> I don't care it's how many. Probably li- a beef and I beer. I don't care how many licenses she doesn't have. <laughs> what was a charity? Probably something. I do a lot with like mental health stuff. Come on, yeah. Come on, what are we doing? <laughs> Drag, I apologize. Miss Burner, I apologize. <laughs> Bringing you down here. 
This is ridiculous. Oh, my God. Oh, God. This is ridiculous. I mean, I, it, I am like kind of the country club Brooklyn, I guess, because not a lot of people would play tennis or golf. Yeah, there. that's weird. For it, that's what I'm saying. It's my shelter around experience that I think elevated my culture. Okay. That's you guys are putting a lot of stock in this. But sh- I did go <laughs> to Shutter uni- Island. You, shit. you guys, I went to <laughs> University of Wisconsin. That's yeah. That's no, a, no, it's not. That's a good fucking school. I mean, school. it's that's a good school. It yeah, is good football program. Too. Great football program. It is considered one of the Ivies of the Midwest. Arguably, people okay, would argue that. Okay, that's the trashiest thing you said <laughs> in the last forty-five minutes. Yeah. There we go. Next, you're gonna say it was a satellite camp. <laughs> 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 University of Wisconsin, Long Island. Um, <laughs> but a lot of duck hunting, a lot of cheese curds, a lot of beer. Sure. Simple life. Sure. Love that. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Spotted cow? Yes, spotted cow. I did. I wanted to just see what, what middle America was like, to see if it could enhance my um, perspective of the world, you know? Yeah. Huh. Do you steal candy bars, anything like that for the thrill, airport? No, I do. I did eat my roommate's leftover food a couple too many times, though, but that's... I would get them back immediately next day. I'd buy them whatever I ate. If hmm. you if you go out to a restaurant and yeah. you don't finish your meal, do you take leftovers home? Yeah. You have so you have no problem eating out of your then roommates' leftover containers after they had eaten out of it. Yeah, you're like, okay with that. My roommates would get halal food late at night, <laughs> would not eat it, and then in the morning I'd be like, "Thank you." Halal food is arguably wait, you're crushing half a gyro from your fucking roommate a whole gyro did, wait did they eat it did, was there bites they might have they, they had a little and then they passed out while eating it and then next day i don't want to have to go outside for food that's here we go <laughs> do you guys not eat street meat of course we I do but i don't eat <laughs> not after over. some fucking kid from williamsburg <laughs> yeah that's nuts what the fuck that's not i mean was it in the fridge <laughs> yes yes Yes, it was Still. in the fridge. I heated it up. Were your roommates anybody we know at the time? No. All right. No comics. No comics. Hmm. Have you ever attended a birthday dinner at a hibachi restaurant? When I was young with like poly prep kids, but once I was out of that, I didn't touch it. Holy fuck. Going out to restaurants in high school like that? That's it was classy. like birthday parties. That's no, that was That's... no What? <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese like everybody else. Not in high school, you bozo. I don't know. That sounds pretty classy to me. Actually, I did have a pretty epic birthday party once. They got a pony in Brooklyn. So the kids were like riding a pony up and down the street. Just a big dog. Just yeah. a big, weird looking dog. And then they got all these goldfish and they put it in like a, a little blow up pool. And the kids got to capture the gold goldfish. There was a lot of death that day. Yeah. But um, I mean, those Jesus. things don't last. Now right. they say it out loud. I think I'm going to get canceled a, from a, that yeah, party. PETA. <laughs> PETA's Jesus. coming for me. Um, Take a goldfish, throw it on the concrete. <laughs> Brush your teeth in the shower. No, God, no. Pee in the shower? Yes. Okay. Pee in the pool? Yes. And hot tub, which is kind of classy that I'm in hot tubs. <laughs> no, it's not. It's hot. You pee in a fucking hot tub? It's already hot. I also pee in hot tubs. <laughs> what? The hot it, water makes you want to pee. That's Toby, too small. It's scientific. Toby's mad at me like we go in hot tubs every night. We're gonna. We're doing good. <laughs> Dude, come on. When listen. this movie comes out? I it's like, like the, It's <laughs> chlorinated. I think it's classy that I've been in enough hot tubs to have a peeing routine. Well, hot, hot tubs aren't that classy, no, depending, on, depending the on the application the... of the hot tub. My whole case oh, is if it's above apart ground here. or below ground? If you have a standalone hot tub, that's ultimate, That's what this show was there, there, based there's, on. There's not enough water to <laughs> disperse what, the pee. That's what there's started the show. <laughs> it is. That was like one of the first questions that, we, that started the show. A standalone hot tub is trash. Garbage. I'm pretty vocal about peeing in hot tubs because the reality show was a lot of like summer shit. So I I would just be like going to go pee in the hot tub with Carl in it. And that's just what I would do. <laughs> you would say that and then yeah, go do it. That's that, was, cool. that was fun for me. <laughs> it's probably Or trash. like I would just be looking at the camera guy. I'd be like, I'm peeing. And they'd be like, you're disgusting. <laughs> when you were an athlete, did you ever use those ice baths? That I see celebrities oh my going God. into. Yeah, it was horrible. You did? Yeah, they would. It was Damn. like a hazing thing where after practice they would force us to be in for five minutes. The first minute's horrible. Then your body starts going numb, and then you're kind of just sitting in it. And then you That's go outside, and then it's fucking Wisconsin weather, so oh. you could die of pneumonia. But it was worth it for the sport. Yes, it was. That's it. awesome. Mm. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Here's a question, athlete. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite Gatorade flavor? Great question. Um, I have to go with. Okay, my actual favorite is mango, which you co- you won't find a lot. It's very rare. Sure. But next, I'd have to go with classic icy blue. Yeah, nice. Because you're a fucking, Thank you know. You. you. don't have your head up your ass. No. Hmm. But I would drink it, and I would get it all over myself every match. What would you? Yeah, what would you drink on the match? So 
So apparently nowadays Gatorade's considered like crack cocaine and it has too much sugar. But as sugar a kid, all we did was drink Gatorade. It was in my fucking veins. Get I was out of so my jacked face. up. Yeah, yeah, fucking yeah. loved it. So I would drink Still so build. much Gatorade. They would have like a little water on the side, but I think water's boring. I would just be chugging Gatorade. So that's what's in your little squirt bottle. Yeah. On the side. Gatorade. Powerade doesn't hit the same for no, me. No, it's, no, no. It's no. offensive. What? Yeah. But nowadays they That's have new ones trash. like body armor and like less sugary drinks yeah, 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 yeah. that are supposed it, it to be better for you. Yeah. Hmm. So they were like, this that. stuff is bad for children. So. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's Gatorade. Uh, <laughs> are you TSA pre-checked? I am currently, I have, um. what's the other one? Clear. I have clear. <laughs> no fly list. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm supposed to get on TSA pre, um, but I've been procrastinating. She bought a plane, but she can't fly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she you, gets, a, you guys she get me. She bought a G5. You get me. I lost my pilot's license. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't, parallel, couldn't parallel park this thing to save my life. Uh, you get cash back when you when you make a purchase. No. Yeah, you're classy. I'm Very even... clean. <laughs> How do you feel about Parmesan truffle fries? I fuck with that. Okay. Anything with truffle, I fuck with. I like it. That's classy, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Fake truffle, mm-hmm. real truffle, I'll take either, though. Mm, okay. I've recently gotten a truffle hot sauce that I've been fucking with. You do hot sauce. Um, Isn't that the brand? Just a little bit. It's called Truff. truff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How high can you go? Ad. How hot? So it's an Instagram ad? Um, I got it for free. I did. Oh, I did yeah. get it for free. Well, there she goes. <laughs> there she goes. Here we are. I mean, sh- so the question is: You're doing sponsored fucking do, hot sauce. Posts. Are you doing sponsored hot sauce? Ads? I do. I just did a sponsored post for Body Armor yesterday. I do a lot of sponsors. Oh, that's why she fucking ran. Now, Body, uh, they're doing fifty percent less uh, sugar yeah. than Gatorade. <laughs> yeah, Toby, cut that. Always she selling. She holds up a pound Always of sugar. Selling. <laughs> I also Gatorade. I want to know from you guys. I do sponsored ads for dildos. So sex toys, because okay. the average influencer doesn't want to do them. Mm-hmm. And these guys have a lot of money for marketing. I know. Shout and out to Adam and Eve coming up. In yes, a yes. <laughs> and I have a following and I'm a comedian. So I'm like, please, I would love yes, to do ads. For and also it's like it talks about sexual wellness, whatever. You know, it's important. So I do sex toy ads all the time. And that's how I bought my Audi. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. Got to respect it. I like it. I mean, I'm not like jamming it inside of me in the <laughs> ad. I'm just holding it up. <laughs> you like what you see? Click the link in my bio. <laughs> I do not have an OnlyFans yet, but um, if things go bad, you never know. Hmm. It's fantastic. Any hoarders in the family? No, but I, I'm not the cleanest. I'm a little messy. Really? I think we all are, though. I mean, I'm everybody, a creative, you know? Every, everybody says they, they try. I'm an artist. Yeah. I'm an artist. <laughs> Um, hmm. But yeah, no, I'm not clean. I'm not OCD. But I was raised with the Italian family. My mom would just like clean everything. She loved cleaning. Yeah. So I felt like I was giving back to the family. Okay. Leaving a little trail of mess. Hmm. What's the coffee pot situation at your place now? And do you have your own place now? Or do you guys, you, know, so you and your I'm, fiance live together? I'm living with my fiance. Nice. Um, In Lower East Side. Okay. And he I'm, does pretty well. He does well. Yeah. I'm not a big coffee drinker. All right. I drink chai lattes and matcha lattes. Matcha's classy. <laughs> so oh, shit, my wife now. does. <laughs> On the Lower East Side. <laughs> there are moments when I'll be sitting with my fiance on the Lower East Side and I'm like, we're not cool enough to be here. Like, yeah, you need to you gotta... put on a tutu or something and like figure it out. Yeah, it's true. You need like cool fashion all the time that's like breaking norms and like yeah something newest... so insane where you're like, like he's i'm a... not buying this you're but he's cool as shit you're cool he's what a you sharp talk? dressed guy you guys too. do belong he down is, there what do you mean oh my god thank you are you guys shipping us as they say what What's does that? that mean it means like to support like you ship a relationship like you you're you you want the best for them oh 100 percent yeah okay i've cool. always been a big fan of Des. Has Good he been? Kid. Has, has he been? Is there anything I should know about him that I don't know? I, I, I don't. Know. I don't even know him that well. Just don't, just <laughs> well suddenly you guys don't know him. If you suddenly you've never met him. I just know him to say hello to him, but yeah, I know yeah, he's yeah. a good-looking kid in a sharp dresser. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe I would like to kiss him yeah. on the lip <laughs> <laughs> if he were to be open to that. Do I find him attractive? Yeah, I do. <laughs> Wait, nobody asked me that. <laughs> Tommy, cut the tape. <laughs> uh, but you, I, I appreciate the humbleness. But you guys do belong down there. I'm know, 42 I, episodes on Bravo. What do you talk? If you don't belong in the Lower East Side, who does? <laughs> no, but it is very young and very cool. Like it is. Gotcha. 
very fashion forward. Yes, like, so fashion forward. The point forward. where it's like people are walking, you're like, what, what, what's going but on But they here? pull it off. It's wild. Oh, yeah. What's fashion forward mean exactly? You're backwards. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite of quick. you. What does that mean? Fashion forward means like you're creating the trends. You're yes. not just copying shit. You're not you like, you're like, yeah. Like what? you, someone's doing something crazy on the Lower East Side and then like three months later, it's on the cover of Vogue, the yes. same style. Because they're the artists that are like create. It's like, you know, underground comedy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> give me an give me an example of something that we I'm not do it. I mean she can try. I'm not uh, like like, like a birdcage on your head and Jinko's on your legs. <laughs> yeah. And you'd be like, what is that person even wearing? And then What do I get? Months- something like that. <laughs> <laughs> get down to the slower each side. See what's going on. Kids on TikTok? I, I is that a V neck or just a, a stretch a stretch yeah. scoop neck? What's happening? It's gotta get over that. T- I didn't know we, I didn't know we were coming here to insult each other. <laughs> Are you, are you over to my aunt's house? <laughs> it's it's a it's a loose what you call. This has just come up. Loose scoop. Yeah, it, th- this has just come up. A mm-hmm. um, couple of fans have hit me up. <laughs> I gotta start. I gotta start doing collared shirts for for the duration of my fatness. Because yes. it's a tough look. Yeah, it's bad. I like it. Or maybe it's fashion forward. I don't know. Yeah, maybe just say that they don't get it. It's fashion. Maybe in five years, fat guys with loose collars and pre diabetes neck is gonna be in, is gonna be on the cover of Vogue. <laughs> Uh, how about that, Kippy? <laughs> I mean, sure. I'm a runway model. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Ever see your parents' French kiss? No. It's pretty good. <laughs> Ever ridden a mechanical bull? <gasps> no. You I thought I had her dead to right. <laughs> I've, I've watched my friends, but I'm like, nah, my tennis career is too important. Dude, the whole Ooh. vibe of this show has been Foley being like, she's all class. It's like two detectives. Yeah. And he's like, it's an open and shut case. And Kippy's like, nah, there's more to this there's thing. No. <laughs> it's deeper than we, know, than we think. <laughs> oh, the, well, I'm a comedian, so I obviously hate myself. So there has to be some trash in there. But you guys haven't. Yeah. I haven't found it yet. I haven't found it yet. We're not going anywhere until we do. <laughs> do you have name brand luggage? No. 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 You're just like whatever. Some a black. I, I think at a young age, I lost, I've lost i lost important things. I'm a little forgetful. So I don't like to put my happiness into materialistic things that could be disappeared. Or, you know. Do you have a retirement fund that you've set up for yourself? I do. You do? Because my brother's in finance, so he told me I have to. Is it a 401k? No, but I have like an IRA. Roth IRA, very what? nice. I also have one. There's about 12 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> That's a brag, but I do have one too. Um, That's fantastic. <laughs> All right, you're done. you're at a restaurant. You're done. <laughs> yep. Say you're having a soda, it's a pint glass. Yep. Will you stuff your dirty napkin in the glasses? No, 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 no. But I'll put the napkin on the plate sometimes, yeah. just to let people know we're done. We're done here. Yeah, yeah. But never, you, not in the. Will you also? This has been highly debated on uh, Twitter over mm-hmm. the last couple of days. Mm-hmm. Stacking the plates for the server, classy or trashy? What do you think? I think that is. I think it's classy. Okay. I think it's classy. Because you're trying to get out of there. You're helping a little bit. I don't think it's necessary. Right. Because, you know, let her, you know, have a purpose. Mm-hmm. But, um, or him. Or him. But I'll um, move, move the plate sometimes to make it easier for them. But I'm yeah. not going to do a full cleanup. I like it. Yeah. I'm not getting the bus pan out. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. How do you save an avocado? Um, you, you keep the you- pit in it. Yeah, that's smart. You Damn. keep the pit in it. Especially mm-hmm. if you make guacamole, save the pit, put it in. It, <laughs> it's like the Matrix right now. How, <laughs> this is funny because me being just a millennial white girl, <laughs> you guys are like you're so classy. <laughs> yeah, I'm I mean you're. Being, I mean you're blowing our minds. I'm just being an annoying millennial white you girl. You got this, avocado. This on is it. Bare, <laughs> me telling you how to save avocado is bare minimum to be a millennial woman. Sure, of course, of course. Bare minimum mm. avocado toast. You have to be able to handle that in your sleep. Any paintings of your family together? You have a family painting. No, thing. but my nan and pop of the Italian side do have a couple portraits together to show their love. Portraits or paintings? Paintings of portraits. That's I but that's okay. old school. Yeah. That's old school. Do they, do they have the pictures of like Sinatra and the Pope and stuff like that? They well, Sinatra's always playing in the background. Um I think there's a photo of them meeting him once. A little handshake. What? Yeah. Oh, I mean, they're real Italian. <laughs> you got a picture of you meeting Sinatra. I think Sinatra kissed my mom on the cheek. She tells that story a lot. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Every, He's like, I had to break Christmas. his fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> and my Nana is um very, very beautiful. My grandma. Mm-hmm. She's like sexy. Yeah. And um, I've seen her Instagram page. Oh, yes. Nana still got it. Follow Wait, her. Are you being serious? 
Yeah, my nan is very, very beautiful, and she has Slid so in those DMs. she I'm has sorry. a ton of stories of just celebrity men, like Yankees, just like hitting on her. And um, that's awesome. Yeah, so old that's, school. So you're both. Your I don't know if that's class. My my grandma has a Instagram full of like thirst traps. Wait, she really does. Yeah, yeah. is that classy or trashy it's of trashy. her? What do you come on? <laughs> You're a goddamn professional tennis player. What do you think? This is my Trashy. this is my nana's Instagram. Machi, machi. <laughs> She's a piece. <laughs> I, I got all I I mean I You got an Uber to Shelter Island real quick, huh? <laughs> I got everything I need to I mean, what are we doing? <laughs> mm. I mean I've told you some I You ever go you into Sephora and get anything and then and then leave with it? No. <laughs> I do that. <laughs> Go to get a couple samples and get. I got. I got one from Patreon that. My, but you don't. Uh, you don't drink. But it is but the I, mean, I do thing. drink sometimes. Uh, it's from TT. It's just letters. Uh, first question: You ever top off your white claw with vodka? Give it a uh, floater. No, it's no. the thing. I'm. I'm kind of an old man yeah. who's retired in a thirty year old. Girl's body. You ever see the Bacon Brothers in concert? No, I don't know who yeah, they you are. You know what that is? Good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to? <laughs> you want to no. go next Friday night? <laughs> I got two front row tickets. <laughs> Have you ever seen a band twice in a row? No. Ever been on tour with the Dead or anything like that? No. Burning Man? No. Lollapalooza? No. You floss every day? Every three days. Damn, this kid's good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what? Have you turned? <laughs> Yeah, I was trying to. Get, I've, yeah, she's. You were on to me for. I think it's because I was an athlete. I have a kind of a disciplined mentality. Yes, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, I, you guys, you're missing. I did reality TV. I know, but I yeah. But I, I mean, I did do it strategically to. Help I thought about that. My comedic career, but I've done some trashy things on TV. I a, a guy um. I mean, peeing in the hot. You tub are technically a reality TV star. And that I'm, puts you into... I'm now trying to move... I'm trying to rebrand. I'm in a rebrandification. Sure. But um, I did have a guy... That's classy. I Come did. on. <laughs> yeah, she's classy. It's it. That's what it is. Man. Or, yeah. I did have a guy... Working on yourself? What the fuck? <laughs> I had a guy eat me out. I'm on, listening. Where the fuck did this come from? <laughs> on TV. I mean, it was like undercovers, but like you hear... Like really? you, you can hear me have sex on TV. Wait, what show's that? Summer House, the is show. It, and I was is it on, on demand? <laughs> but, <laughs> Season and episode. <please. laughs> but I do. I did it in a like empowering way that you know women should be able to enjoy sex. Sure, and, of course, and and, like the, the and have stigma, fun yeah. with like like he's a hot model, and I was like, yeah, I'll let him go down on me. Like I felt like that was a very feminist thing. I didn't sure. go down on him. Um, so for me, I was kind of just changing yeah, the world She's through sex yeah, on TV. I whooped his ass in table tennis. Yeah, <laughs> then I did beat him in tennis the next day. When you day. run for president, let me know because I'm on board. <laughs> I like this. I did get a, a drink thrown at me once, but I, I didn't rebuttal. I just walked away. Yeah, you're yeah. Who threw the drink at you? This girl named Amanda. Fucking Amanda. Was it on the show? Yeah, she was mad because her fiance was being rude to her and me. And I was like, don't talk to me. How you talked to her, and she got upset. Wow, stood up for herself. Kids are right. It's, a, it's, a, it's an open and shut case over here. I'm, you know, Folks, we gave it our best shot. <laughs> I think we have a pretty good track record of getting confessions out of people on the show. Uh, Hannah Burner. Top-notch class in my book. Top-notch class. Is this bad? Did I disappoint you guys? No, no, no. no, no, no. no There's no, no, no right or wrong. There's no. just classy or garbage, and you, my friend... <laughs> Are the classiest. I'll see you in the Lower East Side. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you in the Hamptons. <laughs> the empowerment, the athleticism, everything. Yeah. It's top shelf. The plan, the, the you IRA. You got. Wait, so coming the from, IRA. Coming from two seasoned comics, as someone who's greener in the industry, can I be a successful stand up with this kind of class? Yeah, 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 for sure. Are, Are you, you talking sure? to us? Are you sure? I was talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Season. You're, already, game a minute. you're already a successful comedian. <laughs> Season. <laughs> you're doing great. What are you talking about? Yeah, you're doing better doing? than us. But I'm saying the long term, you know, there's going to be those ups and downs, those dark times. Um, yeah, no. you. We sure. don't know what's going on. <laughs> I've been, we've been successful for like two months. Yeah, you said season. I started looking around for salt and pepper. <laughs> what? <laughs> Seasoned. You look like you've seen some shit. That's true. <laughs> Golden Corral, 1996. Well, I do. I did fuck with Golden Corral once. All right, stop talking. Once. Okay, <laughs> once. I'm trying to get you out of here. Yeah. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Hannah Burner, what an episode. So much fun. What do you Loved got coming it. up? You want the folks out there to know? Go to HannahBurner.com. I got some stuff in New Jersey, Buffalo, um, some West Coast stuff, and listen to my podcast, Burning in Hell. Definitely love to have you guys on it. It's a mental health comedy pod. Love it. And love um, it. follow me at Being Burns anywhere where I do my, I express my art. <laughs> That's even classy right there. <laughs> and dildo ads. And dildo ads. <laughs> Still pretty classy. It's empowerment. It's empowerment. 2021, Sexual goddamn wellness. it. Sexual wellness. I love That's it. That's right. Get on board. <laughs> Hannah Burner, unbelievable. Kippy, what do you got for him? Uh, at Kevin Ryan Comedy on all social media. Come to a live show. I mean, we got yeah, fucking live dates. Cooking. That's um, exciting. Merch, the whole nine yards. Patreon, check it out. Guys, we love you, and we will see you next week. Peace. Peace.